Hi, my name is Ed, and I will be your instructor for this React Fundamentals course. In this series, we will be creating a simple React Power single page application, which will allow us to search and investigate through popular TV series. We will cover such topics as GSX, components and containers, state, props, conditional rendering, React Router, and much, much more. What you'll need is some knowledge of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. The course will contain some ES6 and ES7 syntax, but don't worry, I'll explain everything along the way. I will not be assuming that you know anything about React, so each and every line of code will be explained with great detail. In this course, you will not only learn how to write React code, but you'll also find out how to maintain and organize your code base to keep your code as clean and readable as possible. So pick up your IDE and try to code this app from scratch along with me in this React Fundamentals course. We will be using an official React boilerplate created by Facebook's team. You also need to install Node.js on your local machine. I already have it, so I'll skip the installation part, but you can download it on Node.js.org. Let's go back to the GitHub page, and first of all, what you need to do is you need to npm install create React app with the global flag, and this will take a few seconds. Now that we have it installed, uh, you can go back to create React app GitHub page, scroll down a little bit, and here you can see the quick overview. Um, I don't need to use this npx, so I'll just copy create React app, paste it in, and the first argument is the folder name. I can actually show you if I remove the folder name, if I press enter, it will say that I need to specify the project directory. For example, create React app, my React app, and I'll do just that, and I'll name my app TV series app. Uh, so this will probably take a while, uh, a minute or two. Now that our app has successfully been created, I'll change directories to the TV series app and I'll type in npm start, press enter, and this should spin up uh, the development server. Uh, if you're spinning it up for the first time, it will probably take a while. And congratulations on setting up your React environment. What you're seeing right now is the boilerplate that Create React App provides us. Let's open up the code editor and see what's inside. I will be using Atom, but any other IDE will work just fine. The code for your app lives inside the src folder, so we will be spending the majority of our time here. Uh, the main file is index.js, so let's open that up. And here we can fi find five imports. Uh, let's talk about each and every one of them. Uh, the first one is the React library itself. Without it, we wouldn't be able to create React elements. Uh, the second import is React DOM, which initially was part of React library, but was split into its own eventually. Uh, it works as glue between uh, React elements and the DOM, and usually you will just use it to render your app as we're doing here. The third import is an index.css file. Um, so nothing too interesting going on here, just a simple CSS file. Uh, fourth import is the app component, which we're currently rendering. You can open that up. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand uh, what's going on here. Uh, eventually you will after uh, a couple of lessons. And the last import is a service worker, which will uh, let the app load faster on subsequent visits in production. Uh, we won't be looking into it as it's out of the scope of this course, but I will provide a link below and you can read about it if you like. So let's talk about React DOM render method. It can take up to three arguments. The first one is the React element uh, that we want to render. The second one is the DOM container in which we want to render our React element. And the third one is an optional argument. Uh, you can provide a callback function to it. Uh, we won't be doing that, but there you can store uh, whatever logic uh, you want. And if you're wondering where this root element lives, it's under the public folder, index.html file. I've already changed the title to TV series app. 
uh, you can do that if you like and here you can find uh, the root element I mean the div element with the ID of root so let's close index.html and let's try to create our uh, own react element and render it to the DOM so I'll create a variable with the name of greeting and I'll assign uh, create element to it and also this method takes up three arguments the first one is the tag that we want to use I will be using an h1 tag oops uh, the second argument is the props that you want to provide to your element uh, don't worry if you don't know what props mean uh, you will find out in later lessons but for now I'll only provide an empty object and that will work just fine and the third argument is the string uh, that we want to use inside our h1 tags and I'll just say hello world take the greeting variable pass it into the render method save index.js and now we're seeing uh, our newly created uh, react element with hello world greeting attached inside app.js we're seeing a different kind of syntax this bit of code also creates a React element, but it's using a syntax extension to JavaScript, which is called JSX. As you can probably tell, this looks a lot cleaner and readable. So let's refactor our newly created React element to use JSX. Syntax-wise, it's really similar to plain JavaScript. So just open up h1 tags and type in hello world save it and the result on our page hasn't changed one bit under the hood create react app is transpiling jsx elements to react elements with the help of transpiler called babel if you're interested in how the transpiling works uh, i will provide a link below and you can read more about it if you like. JSX also fully supports JavaScript, so you can embed expressions inside of it. Let's create a simple function which will just return the current date. Inside of it, create a data object. And let's just return the current date. Okay, so we can refer to this function inside our greeting variable. Um, JSX uses a special kind of syntax, which let the JSX parser know that it needs to interpret JavaScript expressions instead of a string and let's just type in current date and use this special syntax which is just the curly braces and let's refer to the function here save it and our page is now rendering the current date awesome also if you're interested uh, this is just known as an arrow function, so essentially it's identical to this kind of syntax. Again, the end result hasn't changed at all. So congratulations on using JSX the first time. We already have an example component created for us by create react app. Let's render it back inside index.js file. We can delete the code that we've written in the previous lessons. We won't be using it anymore. 
and let's refer to the app component inside our render method now if you're wondering why we're using a different kind of syntax which looks more similar just to regular HTML um, that's because we're rendering a fully functional React component instead of just a simple variable with some JSX assigned. So save index.js file. Go back to your page, check if everything is working correctly, and it is. So let's open up back the app.js file, and we can see that we have a class created with the name of app, which is extending a class component provided for us by React. And inside this class, we have just one render method, which is returning the JSX that will render inside our page. So nothing too much difficult is happening here, and we can easily make the changes to fit our needs. So first of all, let's delete the image and we can also remove the import here save it go back to our page and the image was successfully removed but we have a big gap under the title so open up app.css find app header class and change the height instead of 150 pixels, change it to 60 pixels, save it. This looks much better. Okay. Let's change our title to TV series list. And instead of this intro text, we will be creating our own first component. So let's create a variable with the name of intro and assign an arrow function to it, which for now will just only return this copied JSX here. So be sure to add one argument with the name of props, which is sure for properties. In the upcoming lesson, you will understand what that is and change the text to our first functional component and refer it here. Save app.js and we have created our first functional component. So both intro and app are identical from React's point of view, although app has additional features since it's extending the component class provided by React. Uh, we will discuss those additional features in the upcoming lessons. Functional components are called functional because they are literally just JavaScript functions which return a React element. In our case, we're just returning a simple GSX. It's really important to have your own custom component capitalized since uh, that's the syntax convention that GSX uses. Uh, lowercase names will refer to built-in components. So it will be just considered as simple HTML tags and capitalized names will refer to your custom components. Now that we have written our own React component, we can make app.js a bit cleaner and create a separate file for the intro component. Under the src folder, create a folder with the name of components Inside the components folder, create a folder with the name of intro. And inside the intro folder, create a file with the name of index.js. Let's copy our intro component from app.js. Pass it back here. And remember to import React library since we're 
creating React elements inside this file. All that we need to do is export the intro component and we're good to go. By the way, if you're wondering why we're using a sort of different syntax here, this is just known as a shorthand syntax for arrow functions. So what goes after the parentheses uh, is returned from this arrow function. And also one good thing to know is that if you're passing only one argument into your arrow function, you can delete the additional parentheses here. Save it, go back to app.js, and let's import intro from components, intro, save app.js. And nothing has changed on our page. But what happens if we want to use a different message inside intro component? Ideally, we want to reuse this component, but right now it will always return just the same message. That's where properties get in. Think of them just as function arguments to your components. So inside index.js, we have one argument passing in into the intro component. And here we can use those custom properties with the help of the props object. So props is just a simple JavaScript object with all of your custom properties combined. Inside that app.js, let's create a custom property to our intro component with the name of message. And here we will add a string, which will say here you can find, can find all of your most loved series. Save app.js and inside the intro component, let's delete this string and just access the message property inside our props object. Save. And as you can see, we are rendering our intro component with a custom property. By the way, you can pass anything you'd like. So not only a string works, you can pass in a Boolean, a number, array, or even functions. It's time to start adding additional functionality to our app component. Components that extend React component class have additional features, and one of them is state. But what is state? Think of it just as plain JavaScript object to which your component reacts and renders whatever is needed. Let's create our state object and add a property to it with the name of series. And for now, this will only be just an empty array. We can access the series array inside the render function by simply getting it from our state object. So just to be sure that everything is working fine, uh, let's print out the length of series array to our page. This dot state dot series dot length. Save app.js. And the length of our series array is rendering to the page, which is zero. And that is correct. So just to keep our project a bit more organized, we already have components folder created. So let's add another folder to it with the name of app and move everything that is connected to the app component to this folder. So app.css, app.js and app.test.js. Uh, since we moved it to a different folder, we need to change the directory for our app component. So just like that. Also, we need to change the name of our app component since we already have a folder name for it. So just to make it easier, I'll just rename it to index.js. Uh, that way we can import it uh, just like our intro component and we don't need to specify the additional uh, JavaScript file. Okay, so everything is done inside our app folder. So 
what's left is just to change the import inside index.js. So since we move this to components folder, let's add components, save index.js, and we have the same page rendering once again. React class components have access to so-called lifecycle hooks, in which you can run your code when a particular component mounts, unmounts, receives new props, and many other situations. Let's take a look into a method called component did mount. It will be immediately invoked after the component has been rendered. What we do inside this method is completely up to us, but for now let's create an additional array with the name of series. Uh, which will hold only two elements for now. And the first one will be, let's say, Vikings. The second one will be Game of Thrones. Let's use a set timeout function, which will take two arguments. The first one is just a function. And the second one is the delay, after which your function will be invoked. Inside the function, let's use a set state method which will take an object as its first argument. So what set state does, it tells React that this component and its children need to be re-rendered with the updated state. So let's take the series property of our state object and assign to it our newly created series right. Save index.js, go back to your page, and the length of the series changed after two seconds. Let's go back to index.js and I wanna show you a trick. So inside your object, if you're using the same names of your property, you can actually delete this bit of code and this will just take the series property and assign uh, our newly created series array to it. So save index.js, go back to your page, refresh it, and the length of the series should be two after two seconds. In order to send requests to the server, first of all, we need to install a library which will let us do it. There are a lot of options out there, but I personally love to use fetch. We can install fetch with node package manager I'll just copy this bit of code and pass it into the command line. Press enter. Okay, after installing fetch, let's open up our app again by typing in npm start. Okay, so we have our app running back again. So let's go to the code editor and open up index.js file inside our app component and let's import fetch and let's just send out a request to the API whenever our app component renders. Uh, obviously we want to do that inside component mod method. Let's get rid of this bit of code and type in fetch which will take a URL as its first argument. Uh, we will be using a service called TV Maze API, which will let us obtain different kind of information for various TV series. Right here, I'm just searching for TV series with the name of Vikings. And fetch returns a promise, so obviously we need to resolve it. And in order to do that, we'll need to chain in then method, which takes up a function as its first argument. And inside this function, we will have access to the response object. So for now, let's just console log the response object and go back to our page, open the console. And here we can see that we're getting back the response object. What we need to do right now is parse the results and get the JSON from this object. Um, it's really easy to do. So what we need to type in is response JSON. And this will just return the JSON from the response object, obviously. 
So what's great about um, promises is that we can chain then methods and what we're returning from this line will get back here. So we'll get back the JSON and let's for now also just console login. Okay, save it. And we're getting back uh, 10 items and let's take a look into a few of them. So the show ID, uh, the URL and the name of the series and we have a lot more going on inside the show object. Um, so what we can do inside this method is that we can actually um, set the state of our app. So let's use this set state and uh, let's add in our series to the series property of our state. Save index.js, go back to the page and we're getting back the length of series array 10. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. And just to be sure, let's refresh it one more time. And yes, we're getting back the response from the API. Right now we launch an API request every time our app component renders. But if you think about it, does the app component really need to know about the TV series array or when and how the call will be launched? The answer is definitely not. We want to keep our app as modular and as simple as possible. That means creating separate components when it's logical to do so. In React there is a common pattern used known as presentational components and container components. The idea is very simple. Inside your presentational components, you would be concentrated on, on how things look. You wouldn't specify how the data is loaded or manipulated. And inside containers, you would have all of your functionality. That means how things would work, how data is fetched and manipulated. Most of the time, containers will be stateful. That means they will use state to serve data to our presentational components. Okay, so let's create a containers folder under the SRC folder. Inside the containers folder, let's also add another folder with the name of series. And inside the series folder, let's add an index.js file. Import React component from React. Create a class with the name of series, which extends component. And let's render for now, only a div. Let's type in series container. Export default series. Okay. Um, inside our app component, let's import series from container series. And let's render it under our the length of array message. Save index.js, go back to the page and we're rendering the series container. Okay, um, so what we need to do right now is we actually need to copy this code and let's paste it into the series component. And we also need to get this message and let's also paste it inside our div here let's save the series file then the component file and let's go back to our page once again and uh, nothing has changed so we're seeing exactly the same result as we had at the start of the lesson but now we have divided the logic between separate components. In the next lesson, we will introduce a series list presentational component, which will list our series inside an unordered list.
Now that we have our series array returned from the API call, it's time for us to create the series list component, which will render the TV series. So under the components folder, create a series list folder. Inside that folder, let's add the index.js file, import, import react from react. For now, let's just create a functional component which will return uh, just the div. Inside that div, let's type in series list component. Let's ex export defaulted. And that way we can import it inside our series container. Okay, now that we have that, let's render it under the message of our series story length. And I'll add in the list property to the component. We'll get this uh, list property inside our props. So I'll just pass in this state series uh, here, save index.js. Uh, go back to the page, see if everything is rendering accordingly, and it is. So let's go back to the series list component, and we can delete this message. Uh, let's add an unordered list. Inside that list, now that we have our list property, uh, let's type in props list, and we'll use a map function. Inside that function, let's get the series and let's return a list item. And inside that list item, what we want to do is show uh, the name of our series. So save that, go back to your page, and we're getting um, every single show name from our series. All right. Good. Um, so we want, of course, uh, to look a little bit better. We don't want these dots around flowing and out here. So what we can do is add class name and let's type in series list. Inside the series list folder, we can create a index.css file and let's Type in series list and uh, list style type none. Um, now that we have that, we of course also need to import it here. So import index.css, save that. And we're not seeing the dots floating around on the left side. Also, I don't like the padding on the left, so I'll just remove that as well. Now this looks centered. Awesome. Um, one thing that's left to talk about is we're actually getting uh, this warning from React, so it says that each child in array or iterator should have a unique key prop. So what we need to do is on our list item, we need to add a property with the name of key. And let's type in series show ID just to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay, save that. Uh, open up the console and we're not seeing the warning anymore. So what we did is we add a key to our uh, list item. So keys help React identify which items have changed or have been added or removed. So the best way to pick a key is to use a string that uniquely identifies a list item among its siblings. Uh, most often you will have an ID for that to use your uh, data as key, but when you don't have a stable ID for your rendered items, you may want to use an index as a key just as a last resort. Uh, just know that it's not recommended and you should always try to use an ID uh, that's unique for your list item.
it is possible to create additional components inside a component which will not be available outside of it. This makes your code a little bit more readable and a little bit more semantic and um, it's just a good practice to use. So let's create a, a new variable with the name of series list item. We'll of course pass props to it and let's return whatever we have inside our series list on order list item and right here we can return series list item now let's pass series to it by the way we can also destructurize our props variable inside our series list item so we can just open up parentheses and type in series this will just take all of the properties wh whichever you want from your props object so I'll save index.js uh, go back to our page and literally nothing has changed so for now it may seem redundant that we're creating just a new um, component for a list item but later on in upcoming lessons we will be adding a little bit more information to it and then it will be just a lot cleaner and simpler to understand. In the previous lesson we were factoring series list component. What we forgot to do is add the key property to the newly created component. Let's go back to our code editor and copy the key property from the list item and paste it into the series list item component. Save index.js and the error is gone. Uh, let's open up containers series index.js and right now we're only fetching series with the name of Vikings but of course we want to make this process a little bit more dynamic. Under the length of series array message I'll open up a div and inside of it I'll create an input with the type of text and I'll also assign an onChange handler to it. So what this handler does is that whenever our input value changes it will fire an event to whatever method we assign to it. I'll create a method inside the component with the name of onSeriesInputChange we will be getting an event object from the onChange handler and I'll console.log the event object and I'll also console.log the value of our input. Let's take onSeries input change and assign it to our input. Save index.js and let's type in something so I'll type in game of thrones and I'm getting the value of our input and I'm also getting the event object what we can do with that is we can actually copy the code from component in mount and let's paste it into the on series input change essentially what we want to do is make this part dynamic. We can do that with the help of string interpolation. Inside uh, JavaScript it's used with a very interesting symbol called grave accent. It looks like this and I agree the naming is a little bit weird. Um, we need to wrap our URL inside these symbols and let's take out the Vikings the hard-coded series name and what you want to do later is type in a dollar sign open up curly braces and let's copy the value of our input and paste it to the fetch URL save index.js we're not getting anything from our series array and that is because uh, we removed the component in mount method. So if I type 
anything into the input. Let's say I'll type in the same Vikings. Uh, we're getting the same length of our array and we're getting uh, the series dynamically. It's time to add some conditional rendering to the page. Mainly we want a lawyer spinning up uh, under the input whenever I type in something. And we also want a friendly message which will say uh, that no TV series have been found if the API does not give back any results uh, with the given value of the input. Uh, let's open up series container and we need to add uh, two more properties to the state. Uh, the first one will be series name. Uh, I'll just assign an empty string to it and it will just help keep track of whatever we have inside the input because currently we're not doing that. And I'll also add an is fetching property and I'll set it to false. And this will help us know whenever we're fetching something uh, from the API. Uh, let's get uh, all of these properties inside the render method. I'll just get those from this state. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to set the value of our input to the series name. So right now it will only be an empty string. I'll also make it look a bit better. Uh, let's save index.js. Go back to the page. And now whenever I type something uh, into the input, it will show the results, but it shouldn't show anything inside the input. And that is because I'm not actually setting the value. And we need to do that inside the onSeriesInput change method. Uh, let's type in this set state. And I'll set the state of series name to the target value. And I'll also uh, make the fetching true. Um, and of course, after the actual fetching is done, um, let's set is fetching to false. Now that we have all of our state management done, we can actually go to the page and check if everything is working fine. And let's go back to the render method and we can now actually add uh, the conditional rendering to the render method. Uh, first of all, let's remove uh, the length of series array message. We don't need that anymore. And just under the second div, I'll open up curly braces. And here I want to check if the series length is zero. Then we will know that no series have been returned uh, from uh, the API. And if the series name string, I'll also trim it, is equal to an empty string. Uh, then we know that um, nothing has been typed in and the series array is equal to zero, so we don't have anything to show to the user. Uh, so then we can type, please enter series name into the input. Um, and let's open the second curly braces and whenever the series length is also equal to zero, but we actually typed something in into the input, then we know that um, nothing has been fetched from the API and we can tell that no TV series have been found with this name. Let's save index.js, go back to the page. Uh, let's double check to see if everything is working correctly. So we're seeing the, the message right now. And if I type something into it, uh, the message is gone. And let's type some gibberish. And we're getting that no TV series have been found with this name, good. Um, okay. Uh, so the last thing that I want to do is I want to check whether we're fetching um, something from the API. 
So let's open up the curly braces again and I'll type in if is fetching is true. Then for now let's just show a loading message and if fetching is false I'll just show the series list. Again save index.js go back to the page and we should get the loading message whenever we type something into it and yeah we're actually getting it it's just fairly hard to see because uh, the response from the API is fairly quick. In the previous lesson we left a little bug whenever I type something into the input even though I'm still waiting for a response from the API I'm already getting uh, the message that no TV series have been found and that is because uh, we didn't specify that we actually shouldn't be fetching whenever we want to show this message and the same goes for the message above save index.js and we're not getting that bug anymore the last thing that I want to show you is how to add an image uh, with react so I'll create a folder with the name of loader inside of it I'll just add index.js import react create the loader component export it and I already have a loader gif uh, inside my assets folder you can use whatever loader icon you'd like it doesn't really matter um, so what you need to do is you need to get the source of uh, the loader and I'll just name it loader src from assets loader gif so essentially you're just importing the source and uh, what I want to do here is create an image and I'll add in the src like this and we also want to provide an alternative property because react will give up warnings if you don't do that um, I'll just type in uh, loader icon save your newly created component go back to the series container and let's import it from loader whenever we're loading we're not showing that old message anymore we want to show the loader component save index.js go back to the page and we're actually seeing uh, the loader uh, popping up inside our page I also want to do it um, make it a little bit smaller because right now it's really big and uh, I want to show you how you might want to do that on an element level uh, maybe you don't want to create a new uh, style sheet for that uh, yeah it gives you an ability to add styles uh, to an element and you want to provide an object to it I'll say width will be 75 pixels uh, and I'll save the loader component go back to my page and the loader icon is looking a lot better react router is the standard routing library for react uh, I've opened up the npm page for react router and here we have a short explanation of how we need to install this library into our app so it's saying that if we're writing an application that will run in the browser uh, you should install instead react router dom uh, so let's do that 
uh, open up your command line and let's type in npm install of course we want to save it react router dom Now that we have React Router DOM installed on our application, open up index.js and import browser router from React Router DOM. And we need to wrap around our app component inside this component. And this will keep track uh, of your UI in sync uh, with the URL. Save index.js. And let's open our containers series index. And what I want to do next is copy the intro code. I'll just delete it from our app component and uh, paste it into the series component just above the input. Of course, don't forget to import intro from intro. Save series container, close it, and we don't need the intro anymore here as well. Save that, we're seeing the same result, but we just uh, made our app component a little bit cleaner and moved the intro component into the series container, okay? Um, the next step is to create an additional component, we'll call it main, and here we'll have all of our routes. So I need to import React from React I also need to import the switch component and also the route component from React router DOM. Then I'll create the main component, pass it props, and I'll return the switch. And inside that switch, for now, I'll have only one route exact path and the component will be series. Let's export the main component and of course I also need to import the series container from from series container. Okay. Save index.js and inside our app component, uh, let's delete the series container so we won't be actually rendering it inside the app component, but we'll render the main component from main, okay. And I'll copy and paste it here. Save the app component. Go back to the page and nothing has changed. Um, but right now we're actually using React Router DOM to um, render our series container. And in the next lesson, we'll add an additional page. Um, and then you'll see how uh, we can render uh, different pages with React Router DOM. We want to show multiple pages on our application, but right now we only have one container, so I need to create another one. I'll call it single series. This container will show a series with a little bit more information than what we have on our series container. And for that, I'll need React, and this will be a class component, so I'll need component, class single series, extends component, render, turn diff, 
and I'll just type in single series inside the paragraph and export defaulted. Great. Go back to the main component and import single series from containers single series. And we want to add an additional route. The path will be series and an ID. Uh, this ID will represent the ID of the series that we want to show. And of course it will be dynamic. Uh, we will be getting it from the series container. And I also need to add in the component to the route. And it will be single series. Save index.js. Let's try and go to our newly created container. So I need to write series and let's say one, two, three. And we're getting back the single series message that we just created. Uh, it would be nice, of course, to get this ID. And we can try and look inside the props. Save that, open up the console. And what I'm looking for is the match property. And inside the match property, we have another object. And it's called params. And here we have the ID that we want to show. So I can actually just type in the show ID will be this props. And if I recall it correctly, match params ID, match params ID. Save that, we don't need this anymore. And we're getting back the ID from our URL. Whenever I type something in into our input, I'm getting back the results that I want, but I want the results to be linkable and I just show up as a simple string. And for that, we need to open up series list component. We need to import link from React router DOM. And we need to add the link into the series list item. And as the name implies, this component that works just as a simple link and I want to link it to series series show ID. I'm just making uh, the link dynamic and it will always show the correct ID and link to the correct show uh, with the ID attached of the show. So save that, go back to the page and I'll type in same series Vikings and click on that and I'm getting the single series result with the ID that I want. Uh, with the help of that ID I can go back to the single series container and we will be fetching the series from the API with the ID and since we will be fetching something I want to have the loader and I want to create state for the single series, add one property to it, it will be show. And I want to fetch the show from the API. I'll just copy the fetch from single, or sorry, from the series container. And I want to fetch it to a different URL, of course, because I will be getting only a single uh, TV show. And this is the dynamic part. So this is the ID that I want to use from my uh, route. I can get it back from the props. I'll create an additional variable ID. And I'll destructurize the match params object, get the ID back. And paste it into the URL. Of course, I also want to change the set state method 
because I don't have series or fetching properties anymore. I want to have it set state to show to be JSON. And now whenever our component mounts, we will be getting back the show to our container. Uh, so the first thing I want to do inside the render method, I want to get the show from the state. And whenever the show is equal to null, I want to be showing the loader. And whenever the show is not null, for now I'll just show a message that show has been loaded. Add it into paragraph tags. And I'll also console.log the show for now just to see what it has. It says that the show has been loaded and I'm actually getting back the object from the API. Um, I'll reload it one more time so they can see the loader popping up. Yeah, it's there, just not showing um, for a more lengthy amount of time. Okay, so now that we have the show object, we can start and showing the information that we want into the page. So I will be showing the show name. Then I also want to show the premiere and that will be inside show premiered. Then I want to show the rating I'll be showing the rating average. Then episodes. And that is a little bit more difficult one. It's living inside the embedded property. Ah, uh, so hard to copy. Show embedded episodes length. So I'm just showing the length of the array and that will be the count of the episodes. And lastly, I want to show the image. Alternative will be show. And the source for that will be show image. And I think that I want to get the medium sized one. Medium. Save that go back to the page and we're getting back the info that we want and just to be sure that it works okay uh, let's go back to the main page and type in game of thrones which is also an awesome series so click that and we're getting back the results that we want we can close the console and if we are thinking that you can create an additional component for this HTML, you're probably right, but I won't be doing that and I encourage you to try it yourself. Uh, this is the last lesson and I hope that you really like the series and um, I'm waiting for your feedback and please tell me if something was wrong and if you love the series, just uh, leave a good rating. Uh, thanks and good luck uh, working with React.